Welcome back. This is Sunday edition here on KTN News. Now, the National Super Alliance or the National Resistance Movement, uh, whichever you want to use, have been uh, calling us on a series of activities uh, starting uh, this past week, the climax rally at the Kamukunji grounds in Kibra. And of course, one of those things that I have been talking about is the boycott of goods and services from some companies uh, say, that they say are uh, beneficiaries of what they call an illegitimate regime and they've called on their supporters, all NASA supporters, to not uh, use those, uh, you know, services, goods and services. Let's listen in to what they had to say. Immediate effect, we call on all Kenyans who believe in free, fair and credible elections to boycott products of the following companies. One, Safaricom. And we do understand that it might not be immediate for our members to move and find alternatives, but we are giving our members until Friday next week to migrate from Safaricom. Two, Brookside Dairies. And this includes Brookside, Ilara, Molo Milk, and De La Mer, and all products produced by Brookside Dairies. Three, Bidco Industries. And as our members know, this includes Kimbo, Elianto, Golden Fry, Bahari Fry, White Star, Bidco itself, and any product with a Bidco label on it. Politics and economics coming uh, together at this point. Let's listen to what the Jubilee uh, side had to say about this boycott by NASA. We support Safaricom, Bidco, and Brookside as key drivers of Kenya's economy. We need more investors here. We need uh, 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 more uh, companies open so that we create jobs. And I believe even those who are saying uh, they will boycott uh, Bitco uh, goods, they boycott Safaricom, they have not looked at the implications. All right, so it is about economic sabotage. Uh, that is uh, NASA's uh, next uh, uh, war front uh, in, in its push to, 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 to have its reforms uh, you know, pushed through Dismas. How viable is this economic sabotage? this boycott of goods and services from some companies. Maybe then we go to America first so that we can have uh, very solid examples. Uh, December 5th, 1955, a lady by the name Rosa Parks was seated at uh, a bus and uh, she was told that because she's a black, uh, black American, mm -hmm. she has to give a seat to a white man. She declined. Five days uh, later, she was arrested. And that gave birth to the civil rights movement that Martin Luther King took advantage of. And one year later, the, all the rules around the segregation were declared null and void by the U.S. Supreme Court. All right. So it was actually a success because then uh, now there was uh, the, all the segregation laws in the U.S. came to an end because simply of one lady, Rosa Parks, who said that enough is enough. In fact, there were four, four black Americans, and it's only Rosa Parks who decided to rise to the occasion. And then when you come back to Kenya, towards the end of around 2009, there was a, an issue at uh, Del Monte, where Del Monte in Kenya was accused of uh, mistreating uh, the workers mm -hmm. and uh, their suppliers. And then uh, Dr. Willie Mutunga, before he became chief justice, he was in charge of the Human Rights Commission. And they said we, they requested Kenyans to boycott uh, Del Monte products. And as a result of that boycott, the issue was brought to the national attention. Okay. And in fact, Del Monte responded to those issues. And they signed a treaty that they will be treating their workers with a little more respect. In other words, the boycotts are a huge success if uh, the people driving it are able to generate uh, several things. Number one, media attention. For the Rosa Parker case in uh, the U.S., there was a massive media attention and everybody knew that uh, this boycott is ongoing. And in Kenya is the case. From the time uh, NASA started speaking about the boycott, even Jubilee is uh, responding to that. And Jubilee inadvertently 
uh, supporting the NASA case by talking about the boycotts. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, Kenya is sharply divided. The Kenyans that when a jubilee person is speaking... They have said they are supporting those, the those companies that have been blacklisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, but you see, when uh, the, the clip you've just played, when uh, Honorable Eugene Amalwa and Ababu Namuamba keep on talking about the boycott, even for people who did not know that they're supposed to boycott these products, they get to know that, in fact, there is a boycott. And for a boycott to be a success, three things come to play, whether or not people relate to the cause. Mm -hmm. For the NASA supporters, they actually relate to the cause. Then number two, do they have uh, sweet alternatives? And one would argue both ways, that if you want to send an uh, Mpesa, it's probably easier or rather, if you want to engage in uh, financial transactions, yes. it's probably easier to use an M-Pesa than uh, use an Airtel. Because anywhere you, where you are seated right now, across the road, there's an M-Pesa facility. But if you're looking for an Airtel uh, you know, facility, you may need to go for hours on end. And the third reason is um, whether or not there is uh, media attention. Now, for this one, there is a massive media attention, and everybody is beginning to say that, in fact, it's a, a noble cause. But maybe the underlying, the underlying issue for the private sector in Kenya is that uh, this boycott is going to force them to be key proactive players in the democratic process, okay. that they do not need to hide behind the public sector contracts and only come up during the electioneering period. They need to be very proactive. One would have expected that uh, for KEPSA, the National Chambers of Commerce and Industry and all other critical players would be very proactive in ensuring that IBC is in a place to have a free, fair and credible election. Because the reason for all these boycotts is uh, the IBC's inability to deliver a free, fair and credible election according to the NASA definition. And I suspect in future, all private sector players will know that if you do not play an active role, if you're not proactive in the democratic processes in Kenya, right. then you're going to suffer at the end of the day. Because in the past, most of the big players in the private sector, as soon as they get a deal from uh, the public sector, mm -hmm. they're happy, they go on vacation, they make money in truckloads, and then they're just happy. But this time around, they're beginning to realize that if you're in the private sector, you must proactively support democratic processes. And then if you're going to be giving support to political parties, you need to be very sure on how you're giving, on how you're giving this money to political parties. And you know, it may just be the case that Safaricom is innocent, that uh, Bidco is innocent, and Brookside is innocent, but the reputation risk is so much. Because again, is it, when you isn't look that at... reckless, if that were the case, is not that reckless on the part of the political leaders in NASA? Well, to let uh, innocent uh, corporate companies suffer? such huge perception crisis. You, you know, politicians all over the world, when they are looking for votes, mm -hmm. they're not rational. Mutinda Kavembeya can confirm that politicians are the most irrational human beings. I mean, for instance, that during the elections which took place on 8th, so many people knew that they were going to run for office, but they were not going to even uh, get one vote. I mean, look at the people who are described as uh, fringe candidates during the presidential race on uh, August 8th. Mm -hmm. They knew for a fact that they are not going to get any votes. So they are really irrational. So for them, provided they want to achieve an objective, they will push it to the limits. So it's incumbent for the private sector in Kenya, as well as the religious sector in Kenya, right. that when somebody, either from Jubilee or NASA, is crying about our democratic processes, they must come in Pay attention. and sort out the issue. Because right now, there's a chance that the boycott may not be a huge success according to the NASA definition. Mm -hmm. But the reputation risk to these uh, Safaricom, Bidco, and Brookside, the brand is receiving a serious battery. And if you try to join the dots, especially for Safaricom, maybe even the intention is not to compromise the sales of Safaricom in Kenya. Mm -hmm. No. The majority shareholding of uh, Safaricom is held by an organization in South Africa, which has got its parent company in the, in UK. the UK. So at the end of the day, the Vodafone shares at the London Stock Exchange are going to receive a beating. Right. I'll not be surprised if in the next few days, civil society players in the UK start doing a demonstration around 10 Downing Street asking uh, Theresa May whether she's aware that one of the subsidiaries in Kenya has been accused of mischief during the electoral All process. Right. Hesbon, what are your initial reactions to uh, this? You know, to, to uh, say that now politics is trying to meddle with the economic aspect of the society is to miss the point, because the economy is uh, big, you know, in as far as the society is concerned. And we have a lot of scholars talk about the political economy of the media, political economy of the society. 
and it has a big role to play in a democracy. You look at, at uh, vibrant uh, economies, they sustain vibrant democracies. Why? Because they enshrine a free and democratic media. Mm -hmm. They ensure that there is the independence of the media to perform its roles. And to a large extent, I think this is something that was going to happen in Kenya, because we've seen a situation where uh, the corporate players at, and the manufacturing uh, sector has had a big bearing on the independence of the media, on our democratic processes. And in mm -hmm. fact, the mere fact that they curtail the independence of the media means that to a large extent they affect our democratic processes, especially uh, with the information dissemination. But it is unfortunate to find ourselves in a situation where serious politicians are calling for economic boycotts of established brands in this country. And I want to disagree with Dismas. I don't think this is reckless by politicians. Uh, this is something that we should have seen coming. We've seen um, lack of that independence from big uh, corporate organizations in this country. They've not spoken about ills in this society. And to some extent, they've been seen to perpetrate certain anti-democratic tendencies, you know? And, and it is all in the public domain. Yeah? And, and uh, to say that uh, it is difficult for the public outside there to understand NASA's concern is probably to think that the public there is naive. I don't think they are naive. There are a lot of things that, that people understand. Some of these companies that I mentioned, you had their CEOs, uh, key personnel, just within the presence of the boomers of Kenya in the first general election. And you ask yourself, what exactly were they doing there? You know, and or under whose auspices were they there? And if you listen to the conversation, you realize that uh, after NASA came out with the resist movement, I don't think any economic uh, players have come out to talk uh, against this. What we've had is a group of jubilee-affiliated politicians come and say that we support Safaricom. I would have expected the, the, the Association of, of, of Manufacturers, KEPSA, uh, the National Chamber of Commerce to come out you know, and address this and actually let Kenyans know that when we have economic boycotts, they yeah. should be driven by the manufacturing center or key players in the free market economy. And we know the world over that economic boycotts are called because of certain practices within certain organizations which right. are not you know, attending to the issues of, of, of the society or the well-being. And it could be issues about labor, it could be issues about the quality of the product or pricing. Now, now that we've not had a serious economic player or a body from within the economic sector come and denounce this resist movement, in a sense, you get uh, the idea that probably this is something that they were not for. That mm. uh, there is a sense in which you get an understanding that probably these companies actually did something that these organizations that are respectable and recognized did not approve of. Because if then, you know, this was, was a blatant and reckless attack, then would have had these organizations come in their defense. But I must maybe say that... Trying, maybe they're just trying to, you know, play it safe by staying out, I, staying away. I, I think that's the problem we have in Kenya, that people think that staying out of something is, is, is solving the situation. No. If there is an ill in the society, if NASA is not right in doing this, they should come out and spell out that this is wrong and this is the reason why it is wrong. And I think from where we see it, it is now incumbent upon NASA to make it clear that this is not a reckless affront on these companies, that this is a deliberate effort through concerted effort among many political players, that these companies are interfering with our democratic process. And the moment that sinks into the electorate and the common monainji there, I think this thing will be a big, big success. Well, right. But Ben, give credit to the National Chambers of Commerce and Industry. That a, new, a news conference, the same day NASA MPs spoke about a resist and they said it's unacceptable, unacceptable to the economy. Yeah, exactly. Maybe what they don't have is a sustained program to keep on uh, delivering their message. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, the good point there. I also heard the CEO of KEPSA speak about it on the same tone, that uh, that is not uh, allowed. But uh, there's something that uh, Dismas has given a, a, an example of, the, right. Del, uh, the Del Monte issue. If you follow that issue, it was about actions of the company against Kenyans. It had nothing to do with anything outside that. That there are people who felt that that company is having policies that are against the interest of the people of Kenya. And for that, the people of Kenya were, were asked to, that is very different from what is happening. Because I am yet to hear why 
NASA is calling for the boycott of Bitco, for instance. Uh, I am yet to understand why they are calling for the boycott of uh, uh, Brookside. And uh, the, the, only, the only company that they've tried to explain why is uh, Safaricom. And, uh, you, you know, you, you, it's important for us to appreciate the fact that most of our political class is in business. And it would be very unfortunate for anybody to try and use things that have got nothing to do with these businesses to probably, you know, gain economically using political issues. Yet these players are, are not guilty of anything. It's just a competition. You know, in, in, ordinarily in business, there's competition. You know very well that Safaricom has been the dominant player in that sector. Bidco too, uh, Brookside too. I, I, I hope somebody is not trying to use politics to eat into their market share, pretending that they had something to do with whatever we are facing in our electoral process. Because if it was clear that pro probably there are policies that are very discriminative, that are oppressive, that are being practiced by these people, and for that we are being asked to boycott, that would at least be logical. I'm, I'm yet to connect why we should be boycotting Brookside and uh, Bidco, and, or even Safaricom, because of what we are going through in our electoral process. Because the basic economics I did is that there are things that uh, guide economic choices. I think the key one is value for money. Then there is also tests and preferences. There is also the issue of convenience, which includes supply availability. Now, you ask yourself, why would I want to inconvenience myself to go and buy something that does not give me value for money just because one of my political leaders said so? As, as, as in, it would really have to convince me otherwise. Because if there is what the kind of milk or the kind of cream or the kind of fat that gives me that kind of food that I would want, then you really have to convince me why I've got to use my money on any other thing that does not give me the kind of products mm -hmm. I always appreciate because of things that have got nothing to do with that. That's what I'm trying to say. Because I, I, I think there are people who are trying to mix issues here and they are using the masses without even taking time to explain to them. Because it would have been very easy, like the, the, like the example of Del Monte, that these people are having oppressive policies, right. that they are not treating their labor very well. It is against international labor practices. And for that reason, we need to put pressure on them to change. But why then are we doing this to Bidco? What's wrong has Bidco done to Kenyans? And for instance, if I'm a businessman, would it be wrong for me to take sides? Would be my political rights as a business person or an, an, an investor, should they be threatened? Just, you know, should you go and start attacking my business because of me as an investor in exercising my political rights? Because they, they, we, we need to be very clear. I, I, I think it is careless. I think it is something that is not going to be in the interest of our economy going forward. Right. And uh, we, we need to do leave politics to politics and leave the economics to be divided, driven by economic factors. Because there are factors that generally drive economics. And uh, human beings are expected to make rational decisions. You can imagine people who are now being told to stop using Safaricom, for instance. You know the penetration, the coverage. You know how easy and convenient it right. is to... We'll talk about you know, that. Yeah. So why, why would you want to forgo all that so just because you were told... should to... stay in their respective lanes. Yes, Hezbo. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, well, I, I agree with Kavemba that it would, be, it would be relatively difficult, you know, to, to, to associate uh, what Bidco, Safaricom, and, and Brooks they do with the political processes in this country. And it is, it is, to a layman, it's almost impossible to say that this is what Bidco has done that is affecting me. And I, I'm not so sure that it is right to say that uh, NASA was reckless, because I think that for them to come out, this is a big issue, for them to come out, they must be anchored on very solid reasons. And that's why I said that it is not a question of telling them just boycott this product. You know, there is a lot of, uh, explanation that they need to but give. did they do the explanation to their supporters? And that's no, what I'm saying. That's what I'm it. saying. That, you know, when, when you listen to the press conference, what you are getting are sound bites. So it's incumbent upon NASA. And I want to say that there are opinion leaders outside there who are already shaping this conversation. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is that we are not just telling you to boycott these products for the sake. They're actually trying to make it clear 
that this is the extent to which these companies have frustrated democracy. And this is the extent to which a vibrant democracy would make the society much better and trickle down to you as an individual. And if you want to talk about sustainability, if they succeed in making people understand how any entity that frustrates democracy actually affects an individual Kenyan's life, and to a large extent tell Kenyans that it is in your interest that you boycott this, mm -hmm. then they're likely to sustain a very serious, serious economic sabotage. But I think having said that, it is also important, you know, to note that NASA did not tell people to boycott these products. You know, that is far from the truth. They actually told their supporters. So this is not an affront that is not based on anything. They are not telling people who believe in these products to stop buying them. They are telling people who believe in the NASA course. And, and therefore, if you believe, believe in the NASA course and they believe in this product. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If like you believe in the NASA course and you believe in these products, then it is upon NASA to convince you that boycotting these uh, products will right. advance the NASA course. Okay. Now, now, Ben, you cannot separate politics and economics as uh, Kepsa would want us to believe or Kenya National Chambers of Commerce and Industry and Kenya Manufacturers Association. That's uh, very naive. Because invariably, politicians take decisions that have got an economic impact all the time. When they go sit at the National Assembly or the Senate and pass the budget, come up with uh, you know, motions, acts of the national acts of uh, parliament, they have uh, an economic implication. Number two, when you're talking about uh, boycotts, essentially there are two boycotts. A consumer boycott, like the one for Del Monte, which is anchored on uh, rational thinking, mm -hmm. that a particular company is mistreating their employees, so we need to boycott. Or maybe you are using uh, cheap labor. But uh, this one is an entirely different one, which is going to take Kenya to uncharted territories. For the NASA supporters, they do not expect an explanation from the NASA leadership as to why they're supposed to engage in a boycott. And we, we've known it from uh, the time we started coming up with our constitution. People say that uh, if the constitution says A and Ray Lodinga says B, and there's a conflict, I'd rather go with Ray Lodinga because Ray Lodinga is wiser, is even better than the constitution. And these remarks are even made by professors of law from the NASA fraternity who cannot contradict Ray Lodinga. So if Ray Lodinga, as NASA has indicated, we are going to boycott this, you cannot subject it to any rational thinking. For the voter from uh, Esbon's home in uh, Migori, they're not going to ask the local MP that why should I do this boycott? Because if Ray has said it, as far as they're concerned, it's, uh, it's law. Yes. So it's incumbent for people like, uh, I mean, the companies that have been quoted to engage in a quick roundtable conversation and find out where did the rain start beating them. Because if they don't do that from a communications perspective, while the bottom line may not be affected, but the brand is going to be damaged in a manner that will require a combination of 20 Esbon or Wheelers to turn around that brand. All right. All right. You know, uh, I, I would want to say something. You know, in, yes, in, in, in short, in short uh, what, what this much is confirming here is that uh, there are people who are abusing the trust that has been given to them by Kenyans because, you know, that it does not even have to be rational because we trust you. Even when you tell us to do irrational things, that might be very rational to you, you know, because from the point of the people calling for this sabotage, they might be very clear about why they are doing it. And I've, I've said it before, they also have business interests. It wouldn't be surprising to come and realize that some of them probably have some interest in the communication industry and that uh, they have been frustrated to eat into the market share of Safaricom. And now they want to use politics instead of using the conventional marketing because they also have marketing strategies and they've been trying to get more clients, but somehow it has not been possible. You know, if for your own business interests, you want to convince the electorate that they should stop using a product that probably gives them more value for money. And that should be the basic consideration when it is about your resources. Because why would I want to go and buy a yogurt that does not give me satisfaction? Yet I know that there is the one that really I derive utmost utility. It's about that maximization. And why would I stop doing that? Because that is what logical thinking is all about. That you have to use your money in the way that you maximize its value. So why would I stop thinking that way? Just because I trust someone politically, just because when they read the constitution I have read, I decide now <laughs> I need to transfer that to in pursuit of economic. That is now what abuse is all about.
and he has confirmed it that uh, that most of this is not driven by rational thinking but it's the fact that NASA knows that it has got people behind it and people who don't question whatever they do even when it is clearly not in the interest of the individual they'll follow blindly and for that they've gone ahead and probably that also explains why they've not even taken time to explain why some of these why they are calling for the boycott of let's say Brookside and uh, and Bidco. I've said the only one that they've mentioned and you know it's because of the issue of uh, of uh, transmission of results is, is Safaricom at least they mentioned it directly to do with uh, some role they believe they played in uh, our electoral right. in the conflict in our electoral process but these others why and and, and it, it's important to also imagine that our people are also not that daft that they also <laughs> question so you might do that for the first few days but the inconveniences that this thing is going to bring to them in the long run will make it Th not this must, sustainable it's abuse of, of that political following that the leaders enjoy yeah, you, you see as Isbona had indicated that uh, the NASA message is to their supporters and their supporters are waiting or cannot wait for Ray Lodinga to become the president of the Republic of Kenya. So if Ray Lodinga tells them that uh, these three companies have assisted the Jubilee administration commit electoral injustices, they have assisted uh, Jubilee as a political party to rig the election, then for them they are very excited. They want to break into a dance and song. Actually, a number of them were interviewed in Kisumu and they were complaining in Kondela, they were saying, that are unhappy that they've only been given uh, three companies. They want the entire list so that they can take their decisions. And if you go back to the US, to Rosa Parks, there were four black Americans who were told to stand up and give seats to the whites. Three said, this is the status quo. We are happy with it. We are going to stand. But it took that one lady, Rosa Parks, who said, this is nonsense. I'm not going to do it. And she knew that she was actually committing an illegality. And she was sentenced five days later. But eventually, when Martin Luther took advantage of that uh, situation, one year later, everything was sorted out, and America became a different state. The people suggest that without uh, Rosa Parks, probably Barack Obama wouldn't be the president of the Republic of Kenya. Now it's incumbent on those uh, three companies that are, uh, sorry, president of the US. Yes, yes. Now it's incumbent on those uh, three companies to engage uh, Esbon or Willa here and tell us that NASA is accusing them of uh, falsehoods, that they are not assisting maybe IBC or the Jubilee, suppress the will of the voter in Kenya. Because if they sit mum at their corporate offices, air-conditioned offices, and NASA keep on repeating this message, invariably after some time, people will actually believe that those three organizations right. are part of the electoral the, the, the only difference in Kenya. between the Rosa Parks example that uh, Dismas is repeatedly using is that Rosa Parks was fighting against a discrimination that was affecting people of color across board. That is why it was easy to bring them on board. But here is a situation whereby we have no complaints about Safaricom, we have no complaints about Brookside products. We love Bitco. Actually, most of the products we are using in our kitchen right. are to do with Bitco. So why would you want <laughs> us to have an issue? All right, all right. I you want know, the discrimination to... of Rosa Parks, it was not only her. I it was to... all blacks. I want you gentlemen to hold on those thoughts uh, mm -hmm. hold those, th those thoughts for a moment. Let's take a quick commercial break here on the program. We'll come back to try and answer some of those hard questions that the Mutinda here is raising. And of course, many Kenyans, many of those NASA supporters may be asking themselves, we shall be trying to answer some of this. Uh, NASA is saying that uh, their supporters should, be, should look for uh, alternatives. Some of those questions are, what if there are no alternatives uh, for those uh, products? And of course, some of these issues, without the uh, danger of uh, having a co uh, running commercials for those, uh, some of those uh, products. But what is, uh, uh, you know, a replacement for m -Pesa, for example. What are some of the things that Kenyans think about factors when they make a purchasing decision? Are, uh, you know, those, uh, you know, the, the, the product that the, those people love, are those preferences going to change overnight? Some of those questions uh, that will be key in uh, deciding whether or not this boycott of goods and services by NASA is going to work or not. Let's uh, talk about that next.